Welcome to the podcast. Today, a serious look at serious <laughs> topics. I don't think that's the case. <laughs> so thank you guys so much for joining us as we ponder life. I, I think you're going to find a lot of the normal stuff, so no need to be worried. Well, what do you nor, define normal? Pirates of the Caribbean? Normal? We talk about Pirates of the Caribbean has reopened since has. April, so what did they do? We talk about stuff that you could find on eBay now. What kind of food were President Trump and... Uh, Kim, Kim Jong Un. Uh-huh. Why don't? Why am I back to ill all of a sudden? I, I can't know. get his name right. You were listening to the production. You have an old song from way back in the day. Yeah. So uh, that we there's a lot of whining in the podcast today. Like here's some whining about morning darkness. There you go. Whining. Um, ways to start morning exercise. We got a whole list here. <laughs> um, and a long take on pythons and chickens. Yes, that you'll want to join us for, for That's sure. That's something you definitely want to be around for. So. <laughs> well, don't forget, you can check out Radio You Riot on Facebook if you ever want to message us there. Uh-huh. Or if you want to post and you can uh, submit stories if you want to hear our take on something. Or if you're like, oh my gosh, the riot needs to know about this, you can send it to us that way. You totally should. <laughs> so just message us there. So you guys have a great afternoon. Afternoon, morning, evening, wherever you are, and we'll see you later, Bye-bye. which is right now. Bye. How does Nikki put up with Obadiah day after day? It's easy. We pay her. Radio you. Guys, I've got like the best news that you can imagine. Big news? It's huge. Okay. Uh, Pirates of the Caribbean is open oh, again. Oh, what? The ride? Yeah. The Disney ride? Yeah. Okay. So you can get uh, back. Back on the Caribbean. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. Are you, who's, anybody? Like, are you, anybody, like, everybody's getting excited about it? It was always nice for, like, some air conditioning. That's the, right there. And a nice, slow boat ride. That's exactly it right there. <laughs> you would get on it. I actually, the last time I was in Disney and I did that, uh, it's a water ride, technically. Yeah. But, I mean, you don't get wet on it, but you can. They had some thing where, I don't know, like, it, we had gotten held up in it or something like that. And so we ended up going down this, I mean, what's this hill? Two feet? I mean, it's nothing. But we went down it faster than normal and got soaked in the front seat. Mm-hmm. And I was not happy about mm-hmm. it. Not prepared. Not ready for that. But they ended up shutting down Pirates of the Caribbean because they wanted to replace the controversial bride auction scene uh, that was taking place there. And I got to say, I think it was kind of a good choice because it was a little weird when you're going through, you're going through and it's like, you know, there are kids behind you and they're like, is she getting married? And I don't think they quite understood, but you know, it's something, it's one of those things where you could stare at something for a while, like even as a kid and not notice. Not know and really what's happening. Yeah. Like I remember when they said they were going to close it down. I've been through it a couple of times and I don't think I recall it. I, re- I actually, this time I remember it <laughs> because do? it was one of those things you're we're like, like, oh, that's bad. Oh, the and skin you, trade. You know, human. Hey guys, human <laughs> trafficking right here at Walt Disney. But it's like old timey thing where it's you're like, supposed to laugh that? at it. Yeah. Like you can see where in the fifties they built that and they were like, ha ha ha. Uh, and the wives in the 50s are like, that's what it's like being married to you. You're a pirate. But it was really an honest statement. So now, and it was sad. Now they have a female pirate, Red, and it's been, uh, she's replacing that part of it. She's a brassy buccaneer. Now, I have heard some people that are actually angry for the, you know, removal of the bride auction scene, saying that they're trying to. Well, it's not like that was history. I mean, no, okay, no. Nope, no, nope, it that's wasn't what they like say. Pirates of the Caribbean. The ride itself was historically accurate. Accurate. Yeah. I mean, well, that it, was the defense that I saw being it's a, floated. That it's like, a Disney ride. Hey, you know what? We're trying to soften up pirates. Pirates are bad. And it's like, hey, you know, at this point, Disney is selling pirates as, you know, not exactly a historical snapshot of mm, piracy. Yeah, that's it's, not where I go to for my. My news, but it's finally reopened after being closed uh, since April for what they called routine maintenance. So the other question you have to ask yourself is, now that uh, it's a female pirate who has pillaged the town's rum supply, so now what do we have? We have an alcoholic woman with a gun. Is that something that we want to be... Is that the lesson? (laughs) That's a good point. Is that what we want to show people? Don't look at that, okay? Don't think that one through? Don't think about that one through. And I'm sure she'll maybe make our way, like, maybe they see her as a new character for the movies that can... 
be something. It could be. Why don't they just, they should shut the whole thing down and call it the negotiated settlements of the Caribbean. <laughs> pirates is not even a good Nobody's thing either, guys. Nobody's taking anything. Or Pirates of the Caribbean becomes, you know, people a ride. People of the or, Caribbean. You see people in there and it's about modern pirates and you just see a bunch of people around computers. Yes. Watching pirated Disney movies. That or some sort of, uh, maybe a Bitcoin farm or something. We can set up something. Let's watch The Incredibles 2. I stole it from Disney <laughs> Sir. It's an official Disney, yeah. you know, pirate, pirated copy. Think about think about that. I mean, it's just it's something they could do. But they, they could have modernized it a bit more. But it's fine. We'll take the drunk woman with a gun. That's that's fine. <laughs> Pirates of the Caribbean open now. Well, you really <laughs> sold it. Sometimes a bad example is the best example. It's the worst of the riot on Radio U. So yesterday. It finally came to light. The truth came out. And I'll tell you what, I spent the whole last week just thinking about it and wondering. So uh, I don't know if you heard, IHOP changed their name. So is that official or? It's official. Are we on a um, an April April 12th? Is well, it like April Fool's? Or? It's like this, all right? Basically, they're like, hey, we're not IHOP, we're IHOB. And they're technically not changing their name, but they wanted to draw your attention. Oh, here it is. To the fact that they're doing International House of Burgers. Oh, I never thought the B might be anything with that. We thought it'd be like breakfast, and they didn't want to be associated just with pancakes only. Yep. So, so does this mean they're having a, a hamburger menu and they're promoting it? Uh, yeah. So they're just like, hey, everybody, we got burgers. And people are really... Um, <laughs> People are really not taking well to it. I mean, this may shock you, but Twitter did not react well. No, really? (laughs) The single best thing, though, that happened yesterday of all these people that are so, oh my gosh. So people are going through and anyone want to go to breakfast and get pancakes? Nice. Yeah. Uh, But in the middle of all this, like maybe 20 minutes after IHOP went to IHOB for International House of Burgers to announce their new burger menu, um... Burger King put out a big logo change, and now if you go to the, any of their social media, it says Pancake King. Oh, nice. <laughs> See there? I love that. That's the fun part of social media. That is nice. so So great. for IHOP uh, or Hi- IHOB, however you want to say it, um, they're saying that they're trying to capture business in the day and evening because they normally have most of its customers come during breakfast time. Sure. Nearly half of its customers an entire day is the morning. Lunch has 28% and dinner has 16%, followed by late night, which is 7%. Because they're open 24 hours. Are so, they really? Yeah, they are. Even the one here? Yeah, that one is. Jeez. You just, we're never, we're never 24 hours ourselves. You know what, then? <laughs> we should go ahead and have... Get pancakes one morning before the show? Yes. We should, <laughs> some morning, meet over there at like 4 30 because you, know you never think of that for breakfast they're not open they say they're open it's like the mcdonald's that i pass on my way here yes i pass three but there's one in particular i think it's so funny just depending on the day yeah some mornings they're open you can get breakfast there and other days the lights are just off some... and you know it's just people aren't coming in yeah they're they just, just like, don't ah, have any staff i'm not coming in forget it so we'll see how long or what all they're actually going to be doing um because i still can't tell is ihop actually changing their name or is this just to promote hamburgers for a little bit or what you either die the hero or live long enough to see yourself become the ihob (laughs) nice dear ihob changing from a proven business model and going in a new direction is a great idea sincerely new coke well no offense uh but still when i think hamburgers i won't think of ihob every time i see an (laughs) ihob sign i'm going to assume i slipped into that other earth from fringe yes (laughs) i love that that's good. Good call on that tweet. I'm not going to IHOP for a burger. I'm sorry. If Unless I wanna... we're really surprised, but I don't think so. No. I'm going to Five Guys or something. Sorry, guys. Make your pancakes. <laughs> the riot's future. Two words. Goat farm. <laughs> Radio U. Now, we're into one, two, three, four, five. Day five. Oh, yeah. Of IF. So, Nikki... Fasting. How is intermittent fasting going? Good. Uh, so you have I, it. I need to know when you get everything starts good 
gets bad, and then gets better. That's because you're not with me 24 hours a day. There are moments okay. <laughs> where it, it does not do so well. Um, so I do 16-8. So you don't eat 16 hours a day, but you do eat within an eight-hour window. Yes. It's very popular. Um, there's different variations of fasting. Some people go, like, days. Yeah. Some people go uh, certain days a week. They do certain things. So it just depends on kind of, like, what works for you. But okay. I really like this. I stop eating eating at 5 30 and then mm-hmm. i eat at 9 30 in the morning so i go through the riot and i don't have food okay and it's fine sometimes not so fine the riot is the hardest part like this is yeah the riot is the hardest part okay i would think see this i think i could i, I can do i've done it for mm-hmm. the last couple days not today i was like you're eating well you know what <laughs> I, again, I started a new thing yesterday, yeah. a new workout thing, and that always ramps my appetite through the roof. And so this morning I got up and I was like, nope, I'm eating. I'm I don't starving. care. Like, <laughs> I, I could eat my pillow right now. Like, forget about it. Sure. So you, you're you saying that morning you have to eat, but evening you'd be fine. No, no, no. The other way around. Like, oh, okay. th- this is the space that I could just sit here and drink black coffee, which is mm-hmm. what I'm doing now. And if I had to, like, I could power through this. But, man, catch me at, like, 7 o'clock at night, and I, <laughs> and I don't care. I could have the largest meal in history or yeah. not. And at, like, 7 o'clock, it's like, bro, I need a snack. Now, I don't want to jinx it, but today is the first day, like, I don't have quite the headache. Okay. <laughs> because, I, and I don't know why, like, it, when you tell your body you're going to do something, that's when it's like, well, we're going to have a problem with this. If you just went one morning and didn't have breakfast, you'd be fine. Yeah, no big deal. But you'd get hungry, when, but, like. But it, you, you'd you manage it. It's just when you're telling yourself, no, we've decided to do it. So, like, last night I had dinner and I was done at 530, completely full, completely fine, literally 30 30 minutes later, my stomach's growling, and I'm like, oh, my gosh. It is. So it just dep- it's a mind game for the first several days. Well, it is, and it's interesting. Living in America now, we live in the ver- a very unique period in history where there's absolutely, I mean, it is for some people, but for most of us, uh, there's no scarcity. Yeah. There's just none at all. And so, you know, if you go back one or two generations, even in the United States, they did intermittent fasting, but it was just because, hey, that that's was, all that we can food. afford. Yeah, that's that it. The schedule. And, and yes, like, hey, you know what? You have dinner. No, you're not eating anything else. Go to bed if you're hungry, like whatever. But now we're just like, man, are you are you familiar with the term continuous graze? <laughs> All right. Like there's IF and there's CG. I know everybody's like. And I'm on the CG. Because they were like, oh, we should have small meals throughout the day. The problem is they're not small meals throughout the day. They're just meals. I just be eating. You just eat all the time. Um, So I really like it. And today, I feel like I've kind of turned. Maybe you've turned a corner. Yeah, to where like I'm finally getting used to the morning part, which has been the worst. Okay. No, see, I think nights would be, for me, would be way tougher. There's been a couple of like 10, 30, 11 o'clock at night and you wake up and you're like, I'm kind of (laughs) hungry. It's like I could eat something here's the big question that and I water feel, doesn't always help no no no, that's not the one <laughs> uh if, if is it addressed in any of the documentation that you've been moving through uh does a gummy vitamin uh, does it count? count as food you're not supposed to have anything that has uh various types of like um Glucose, sugar sucrose, yes. any of the crosses because then that basically spikes your insulin which then stops the process of what you're trying to do right so i like it though i'm i'm good for now okay I'll keep doing it. Good for now. The Good Nikki now. story. That, I don't want to commit to forever, <laughs> but I really do like how it makes me feel. So, okay. Hungry, which is great. Yeah. <laughs> but boy, there's a real honesty in that uh, hunger, you know? A, it's a passion with yeah. the hunger that I've never felt before. Red. No, when I am hungry and I do finally eat, I'm really thankful and glad. You're just like, man, food is the best, guys. <laughs> that goat farm is looking more and more likely every day. It's the worst of the riot. So yesterday, President Trump and Kim Jong Il met for a little, uh, that little get together, little little chat, something like that. I just got to tell Kim you Jong-un. that. Kim Jong Un. Did I? What did I say? <laughs> Ill. Yeah. I'm sorry. You're looking for me. <laughs> See, it is the riot. I wasn't ready. Into the future. In with Kim Jong. See, Kim Jong. There you go. In with Kim Jong. Missile. Cool Changes our whole production. Not, any, not anymore. Like, no more missiles. If you want to know the truth, I haven't 
looked into this enough to discuss it intelligently. So what all they signed and what we agreed to yesterday, I don't know. But I know this. They interrupted the Bachelorette for it. <laughs> that and seems people, to be what Twitter was most abuzz about. People are mad about it. Because, like, they're like, Bachelorette! And then they cut to Kim Jong and President when Trump. When they were signing their document, mm-hmm. uh, they did break away from that. And uh, some Twitter uh, people showed their... Um, upsetness about it yeah uh the other thing that i can talk to you about is nikki they had get a load of this they had a six course meal before they got down to business oh really six course meal (laughs) shrimp cocktail oh come on i like shrimp stuffed cucumber Mm. maybe as a a little appetizer haagen beef short rib confit what is that Uh, is that confit? Confit, yeah, I believe so. Yeah, we'll learn to spell it. <laughs> or I guess I'll learn to pronounce it. Um, you had sweet and sour crispy pork and fried rice as well. Well, I like a good fried rice. What's I wonder what a Yang Zhao fried rice is. Like, what's different about that? Not sure. Mm, but with some sweet and sour crispy pork. I like to take the sweet and sour crispy pork and I want to get some rice with it. Mm, so and I'm the same it bite. In the same that's bite. how it is. Mm, that sounds really good. They say that Kim is apparently obsessed with Amontaler. Again, is that a French it's thing? It's a type of cheese. Emmentaler. Uh, cheese, which, you know, there were rumors that he went to a detox center to get off his cheese a while addiction. Ago, yeah. But apparently his fancy cheese was present yesterday, as well as President Trump's haagen which apparently he's got a thing for ice cream and they say has ice cream frequently. Gosh, well, to be in a powerful position to where you're like, do you want cheese and ice cream? Yes. Let's make that a part of this peace treaty dinner of course i do yes every I, night i never signed peace treaties until Without i've had my haagen <laughs> yeah, said us never but we're also never signing treaties <laughs> so they say that uh he also this is kim jong-un has a real taste for hennessy which you know i don't think you should be drinking anything before you talk about peace treaties like the haagen is a stretch no <laughs> alcohol before peace treaties guys especially not in that room that uh, doesn't feel like a very good idea uh, I don't know if it was presented as a gift or if he actually had it, but apparently there was some. I don't know if these are photos of the actual food or just... I think this is just stock footage of the the food of what it would have looked like. Well, I'll tell you what, that dark chocolate ganache looks pretty You know noshy. how to say ganache, don't you? I'm going to nosh, nosh, nosh on that. <laughs> You're perfectly fine with that. That was a tartlet. Mmm. <laughs> I'll have that. They're like, oh, what did you guys learn or take away from the peace treaty? The menu. <laughs> hey, real talk. We'll let Nick get into that in news. Mm, I'm just looking, looking at, at what that. they ate beforehand. Well, that says a lot, too, about the menu and the food. So, Well, it's more accessible to me. You know, I don't understand international relations. It's complicated. It involves words I don't know. But if I'm going to say words I don't know, we might as well get a chocolatey. A ganache. A ganache, 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 ganache. While we're talking. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I hear you. The riot is the radio equivalent of Taco Bell meat. Radio U. I thought about t- this morning <laughs> Instagramming like, hey, here's a picture of my morning run. Yeah. Because I always feel like whether I'm on Facebook or whatever, I always see these pictures from people that are like, look at how God painted the sky. You know, all this crap <laughs> with their morning run. Lovely crap. It is. And I'm just like, hey, guys, take a look at my morning run. You notice how it's you can't see anything. It's too dark because this is this is my life. I'm up. It's pitch black yeah. outside. Well, In fact, so there you... are a couple of streets that I run on. They can't be bothered to either a build street lights or b maybe turn the little coach light on. I'm just out there running, and it's like, uh, guys. Well, don't look at Carl's picture. Like if a black bear was coming through here, I'm dead. I can't see him. I don't know what's going on. And I got this stupid reflector on to show him where I'm at. He (laughs) knows where I'm running from. But you can't see anything else. But I don't know what's going on. Mm. I was thinking about getting those, what did Data call them in Goonies, the blinders? Those big headlights that he had that came out from underneath his... uh, his jacket, maybe I need those. Oh, I need when you run? Head, I need some headlights. You need some, yeah, to be properly lit. Oh, Carl, it's cool. That's an ugly drive. I'm glad you're <laughs> Doesn't not. Doesn't it look nice? It looks terrible. Oh, look at all that water guys, and the sun coming up. It looks can, so dumb. Can anybody else just take a quick picture and text it to us of how your drive is? I want to compare 
and contrast. Nikki, I don't know if we should be encouraging people to take well, photos. Well, when you're driving. not moving. Maybe take a picture from the stoplight. Yeah, I don't that, know. that'll look lovely. Thanks a lot, Carl. <laughs> really appreciate it. I'm glad people are there to dig, you know, pour a little salt in the wound. Well, I mean, we have a lovely view. We have uh, a building outside, uh, some houses, a parking lot, Mm -hmm. just spectacular. We can sometimes see the sun peeking through the trees. It is exciting. I will tell you is that there's about one week every year where I see the tiniest bit of sun before I get here. And I'm just like, (laughs) this is the best week of my whole life, guys. That's when you're supposed to be taking your pictures. (laughs) It's so nice. (laughs) I might be running late if I can see the sun. But it's fine. All right. Well, thank you, everybody. Let's take all of the most mind-numbing things the riot has ever said and play them again. It's a stupid idea, but I love it. It's the riot on Radio U. It was around this time yesterday that we were talking about those oh-so-cool, boring (laughs) flamethrowers. The not a flamethrower, though. The not a flamethrower brought to you by Elon Musk's The Boring Company. They were the ones that were sent out. You could buy them for like 500 bucks. There was 20,000 of them, and Mm -hmm. they sold them all because they wanted to raise like $10 million for stuff. So yesterday, or well, I guess they got their flamethrowers on Saturday. People had fun. They took their pictures and everything. But, Nikki, after you bought a boring company, not a flamethrower, what do you think you're going to do with it? Use it as a flamethrower. <laughs> okay. But once once the fun is gone. Uh-huh. What do you do with it? What happens next? Well, is it like a big lighter? Can you just light stuff on fire that you need to? Like if you're grilling, starting the fire, um, I don't know what else. You're still not thinking about people. People? Humanity. What well, would you do with it? And if you're not going to burn anything down. Burn anything down? That's all I can think that people would do with it. You put it on eBay. Oh, to sell it. You're right. You put it on eBay. Because if you missed out on buying because they had a limited amount. Mm-hmm. So how much so, are they going for? Well, here's one for $3,000 that is currently not selling. Uh, <laughs> here's somebody selling the instruction manual separately for $250. If you uh, wanted it, like a part of that. Guys, that's... that's I just don't know. Can you mail this to somebody? Can you mail Uh, the flamethrower? I think you can. Isn't that what the the thing was where they're like, it's not a flamethrower, which means you can mail it? I don't know. Uh, I don't know either. But 68 people are watching this. It's $2,999 or best offer. Hmm. And to let you know, eBay would be happy to finance that for you. It's $125 <laughs> for 24 months. If you'd like to go ahead and purchase it. So the not a flamethrower, flamethrower. They had over the weekend the first thousand that people could uh-huh. go pick up. Uh, but the rest have not received theirs yet. So if, you know, there's not a big rush of them probably until the rest of them get sent out. Mm-hmm. So, Nikki, what do you think? 3000 for the flamethrower? I'm not flame? paying 3000 I would have paid 500 I- if I was caught up in the moment of the flamethrower. But I would not pay three thousand. There's part of me that I just I have so much regret about not not doing it. That I know about not jumping in because we could have like we had that instant where we could have done. We it. We should have went together and just went halvesies. Halvesies and, on a flame. And then you know we could have weekends with it and weekdays and alternate. Like you could have had the summer with it. Would have been fine. Because I'm barbecuing with that thing for sure. I bet you would be. Your neighbors are like, like what? It's it's only supposed to be a... um, What are you doing? It's a two-foot flame. Right. So it's not anything like you'd expect to see in a movie. Yeah, which is a bummer because that's what you want. But they really had to tone the the flame down. Yeah, because they had to call it not a flamethrower because they had to be able to sell it. For legal reasons. I want... Man, that would that's the temptation. Anytime you see something hot that's selling is to buy it and then not keep it, but resell it and see what you can make. But I don't think this guy's going to get his $3,000. Probably not. Because for $3,000, you can probably get a way more high-powered flamethrower. You know what I mean? One where they can actually call it. Really throw those flames. A real flamethrower. Ever wonder what Nikki is doing when she isn't rioting? Find her Twitter feed at riot.radiou.com. Obadiah's is there too, but who cares what he's doing? Are you guys tired of hearing about IF and morning workouts yet? Yeah. Too bad! <laughs> I got more! It's been an hour, so... I told you this This is all the news when it comes to the uh, the workout world. I, You know what, Nikki? I don't know what has gotten us, because like you, I just have randomly started morning workouts. It's just happened. I didn't plan it. 
I wasn't like, hey, I'm going to do this. I think that's just your new sleep schedule, so it just works out. And in the middle of that, Nikki's like, I should stop eating for 16 hours a day. So <laughs> Doing 16-8. That's where we've landed right now. Sure. And Nikki, here's what I've got right here. I've got a list of suggestions from Ann, Anna Maggie. She's a fitness blogger, and she says that she knows how to get you out there exercising in the morning. Okay. And I, the only thing I want to say is she was like, you know, um, I am one of those, quote, unquote, fabled people who exercises at 6 a.m. And you know what, Anna? We're working then. Come at me, <laughs> sis. You need to back it up to like 4 a.m. Come at me. Yeah, like I, and here, again, here's a picture of her stretching in the sunrise. Sure. Now you're just bragging. Because <laughs> it's not up when we're, when we're trying to do our workout in the morning. Okay, step number one. You ready? Yeah. Tell yourself it'll just take 10 minutes. A 10-minute workout? It's just going to be 10 minutes. Just 10 minutes. So, and then, you know, after you get used to it, if you want to do more, you can. But just 10 minutes, Nikki. Okay. You're going to start somewhere. Number two, ask yourself, what kind of day do you want to have? Good. (laughs) These are all so motivational. I want the kind of day where I'm in bed the whole day. Is this going to make it happen? Is that that the answer that you thought I would come up with? I think she probably thought you'd say something different. She says that people who have made a lifetime habit of exercise do not do it to stay in shape. They do it because it makes them feel good. And I will tell you, I have transitioned to a exercise to feel good versus exercise to be in shape because I'm never going to be in shape. So I've just given up on that. And I'm just now exercising. Are you a realist? Am I? Is that too real, guys? <laughs> Shouldn't share that. Sorry. Just It's just how it just is. telling you like it is. Uh, number three. We love our bodies. Figure out the moves that work for you and do those. So instead of trying to Mine's do a lot of stuff lay, that you... Laying down flat. It's horizontal. Back, yeah, it's usually on a soft, comfortable mat. Hey, you know what? <laughs> like let's, a bed. Let's not uh, overstate the fact that you roll sometimes. Oh, and that you're twist, right. That twisting motion... That's a core movement. That's a core movement, Nikki. Mm-hmm. Rolling over is a core movement. So that's that's the movement we're talking about. All right, we're halfway through Anna's list of things that are going to help us start exercising in the morning. What right? else is there? Have you... I just... None while of them have worked. Nothing's helped you at None all? None of them have clicked. The only one, I, like number two for me works. Like if you decide, hey, I want to have a real great day. This is a good way to start my day. Sure. I, I'm 50-50 on that one. Number four, know the science on exercise and the brain. She says that one way to combat is to know that scientific effects of exercise on the brain you like whatever the time of day you see, I feel like this is tied back to number two. You know that you're going to feel better. Sure. That's back on to number five, set small goals. Yeah. And then so like, for example, today I'm getting out of bed. Goal met. Gotcha. Check Ding. on the thing. So you set yourself a short term goal of I want to get up and exercise three times this week. So I don't want to do this for five months, just three times this week. Number six, separate your excuses from your reasons. Uh, oh. So you have excuses about why you can't and they have reasons or you have reasons why you can't. Mm. And it, like reasons would be um reasons would be <laughs> it's too early. It's too, like it actually legitimately excuses is Excuses would be I hate my life. Sure. I don't know. Like there's your reasons and excuses. So there's your the right, six well, things. Have you are you like so tomorrow no, morning? No, I'm not going to work out in the morning. How, okay, how about this? Tomorrow morning, instead of me like running in my neighborhood, I'll meet you right out in front of the studio. And we'll just walk around. I don't know if I'm if I'm still fasting in the morning. I don't wanna work out and not eat. So, like I think that might push it too much. I I actually think the working out helps with the not eating. I think so. Uh, just tears your body down even more. I mean, more. except for today, because I was starving. <laughs> I'll think about it. Okay. Oh, you know what? Now, while you're thinking, remember to separate your reasons from your excuses. Okay. Is that the, the second one we talked about? Want to know what the riot is doing right now? Follow them on Instagram and Twitter at riot.radiou.com. It's the worst of the riot on Radio U. Listen, we've all done it, you know, where we've just, you hit the buffet, you have a little bit too much. And you know, here's what I don't regret. Here's what I don't understand. You know, for people, when we throw up, it's either we're sick or we've got an eating disorder. But you know, this python here in this Chinese village, he regurgitates five chickens, and everybody's like, Whoa, look at this guy. The python ate five chickens. So he spit them back out, or Mm, were they were they alive? Or were they dead? Uh, Apparently, this is what I think they were dead. Here's the part that amazes me is that the python ate five chickens. 
he was apparently trying to like get away from some villagers and he couldn't fit in this hole so he threw up the chicken so he could fit in there that's an eating disorder guys that's gross python what's yeah. he doing well he's just being what they are i guess what they do he that was survival he had to he had to do that so you know sometimes it's like i got something going on this weekend i have to get in these pants so this well, you're going to spit up the five chickens you well, ate? Well, no, no, no. What I'm going to do is, is not eat the five chickens in the first in the place. In the first place, Which right. is why somebody needs to sit down and talk to this guy. Because that was too much for him? Right. Yeah, but I think they you're eat... You're eating too many chickens, guy. I think they eat all at once, and then they don't eat for like two months. So they that was like his that was his meal. You think so? Yeah, he doesn't eat every five day. Five chickens, though? That's a bit. Like, that's just getting greedy. I don't know. What is that? Okay. What is that chicken doing when it's like, doesn't it? I know that I think it snakes, squeezes it. I know. Okay. I know that snakes can be fast and stuff, but don't you think when, okay, you're standing there with your four chicken friends and one of your chicken friends has just been eaten by a snake. I'm oh, out. Gee. I'm out. <laughs> yeah. You know what I'm saying? It might not have noticed. Well, then you know what? It's time to take the blinders off chickens. <laughs> All right. Maybe it's they don't time. think the it's same way. They weren't around. like, look at that guy. It was just like, hey, I'm still a chicken. Or do you think he was like, he looked at a Chinese villager and he was like, well, I'm going in there or in there. At least my friends are in there. This is a dark take on this guy. <laughs> this is very not dark. Sp- take. Not supposed to think about I it. I don't think you're supposed to think about it. Not supposed to. It's just right. being a. It's just being a python. I, it's just doing what it does. It did. So you know what? Then that means that, like, when I sit down and I eat uh, a couple of plates of chicken wings, I'm just doing what I do. Well, okay, then fine. And then next time you got to squeeze through a hole, right? Then you know what you got to do. Which you never know. I still think that we should put a pole in this room that goes to the second floor. Why well, so we'll never go upstairs down. then? Oh, only for downstairs. Yeah, <laughs> we could and never go up. So it. that would be a hole that I would have to make sure I was ready for. Like I got too fat to slide down to the second floor, guys, or the first floor. So I mean, I'm just trying to put it in. You know what, Nikki? I try to take the news and put it in terms I understand. Yeah. Okay. So I see a ch- I see a snake that needs to stop throwing up. Okay, it needs to get its act together, and maybe. You know, have we ever thought about taking this snake and talking to him about animal cruelty and maybe, you know, introducing him to things like, have you ever tried to eat a dandelion? A You're s- down there. A soy alternative. Right. Like a, a tofu, a tofu thicken. Furky. To- no, chicken. <laughs> tofu thicken. You know? Yeah. Okay. Have we talked to him about no, it? No, no, we haven't stopped because, and talked to right, him. Because, all right, think about this. What if we talk to this snake that's eating these chickens? He's the and first then to make a change. He makes a change, and then instead of going down to the Everglades and killing all those snakes, we send this guy in like a missionary, and he's going to start talking to everybody about, hey, we should stop eating the bunnies. And yeah, we but should then start- you fast forward a couple of years and are like, oh, my gosh, why are there so many bunnies? And then we have another problem. It's like supposed to be a balance of the of the, the ecosystem. Mm-hmm. OK, so you're saying that it's OK for it to eat the chickens as long as we're making more I'm, chickens. I'm not saying that. No. So where was this at again? It was in China. In China. Okay. I can't click this- the whole link and get the whole story because I'm so terrified by the photos. I just have to stop here. <laughs> Listen. To me, I want to see. So, if you found yourself like, boy, that was a lot of commentary, not a lot of content. Well, that's because I can't get to the content because I'm too scared. I just want to be the person like, yeah, my story got picked up today. Oh, yeah, Bob, which story did you write? This story about this python that threw up the five chickens. That's mine. Hey, you know what? That guy, he is still (laughs) getting big day today. He's still getting paid. (laughs) He got something. He's still getting paid. Oh, that's a big. Oh, oh gosh. Oh, gosh. (laughs) Don't watch. They're dead. Looks like. Nikki's got some regurgitating to do. Those are dead. You just see the feet. They're dead. The bone broth is coming back. Oh, oh. It got so cold. The Riot believes in truth, justice, the American way, and high-speed internet. No, faster. faster. Radio U. It's time, Nikki. Get them out and put them on. What? Show everybody your Snapchat spectacles. Oh. The new ones. <laughs> oh, I don't have those. Why not? Why not? Well, I don't use Snapchat as much as I used to. Oh, too good for it. Insta stories stole me away. Um, so I don't have the spectacles. You played right into Facebook's hands, I Nikki. I did. 
I'm fine with it. They're like, hey, how do we get them back? I know, let's steal all their options and make them ours. I also wouldn't be one to really wear the sunglasses throughout the whole day. So I kind of felt like what I would snap, I'd be indoors more than outdoors. You know, Nikki, when you're cool, the sun always shines. <laughs> yes, that's true. And it doesn't matter. Then you could just wear them. But I just never got into them. Mm-hmm. So let's talk about these new second gen spectacles. They're on Amazon right now. Only. That's too bad. There was so little fanfare. <laughs> Sorry, Nikki, Snapchat. They, what? No, this is the <laughs> this fanfare. Is right. the this fan- is it. I may, I remember them talking about that they were going to be coming out, but I expected more. When did they come out? Nikki, I, you know what? Our, come on. Woo! Yeah. I mean, get into it, Nikki. Yay! Give them some fanfare. Because your response was, Woo! Wait, it's coming around to me. Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> the wave's coming to you guys, too, through your stereo. You go ahead. Get in okay. on it. It's fine. Fans back on the wheel. Yeah. All right. You drive with your knees for a minute. Shame on you. <laughs> so they're on That's Amazon. That's all did the you, fanfare that did, we can do. You feel like that was enough? I thought we gave it actually well, way I'll more. I'll tell you what. You killed it first. Oh, yay. <laughs> you killed it first. So. So how much are they? Well, Okay. No, I I would like to know. I know how you're much like, they, how much? I, the question is not what do they cost. How the much am I is, willing to they, pay? No, no, no. no. <laughs> question is what are they worth? Worth? I'd say about probably $49. $49. <laughs> I want to stay under 50 I feel like that's a nice entry level. Oh, I don't man. like to pay too much more for sunglasses, but I know they can get expensive. $100. And fifty dollars. Mm, so what if I'll wait till they take the first one hundred off? Okay, and then I'll be there. Well, here's something that is good. Now I don't know if this is true or not, but I don't think they sold the first gen spectacles, right? What do you other mean? than they sold them themselves, but I don't think those spectacles went out to other retailers, did they? Um, you know, that's a good question. They thought they were going to be like hard to to find in the beginning. They kind of right. kept it. Everybody's yeah. Want remember, them. they had the ATMs where you could go up and buy yes. one from a vending machine because uh-huh. I saw a few of those machines. Um, but outside of that, you're right. I don't think they were anywhere else. Let me tell you one of the best things about retail, and a lot of people can complain about retail, like I don't want to go to the store, I don't want whatever. You see, the great thing about retail is that they only have so much space, and eventually they want that product out. Yeah. Get it out. We don't want it in the warehouse, and we don't want it on the store shelves, and that's where sales and clearance comes from, and that's how Nikki gets her spectacles maybe on the cheap. I don't even know if I would. (laughs) But if it's at Amazon, is it going to be at uh, brick and mortars? Uh, Well, they're saying Amazon, but even Amazon will have clearance sales because even they, with their warehouses, will get tired (laughs) of having them laying around. So these are nice. Nikki, you get this red pair. What do you think? Uh, Maybe. So I'm looking it up. Snap. Snap glasses. And then that'll give you a chance to catch all your sick flips on your board. (laughs) Oh, because that's all the time. That's what you could be doing Uh, for that. All right. So I'll put that on my wish list. Okay. All right. So just go wink, ahead and wink. <laughs> what are you winking at me for? I well, no, that feels like, inappropriate. I think that's in the handbook. I take it back. Give me my winks back. Okay. <laughs> so this, I'm sorry, I said red. Is that coral? Yeah. Is that, like is a pinkish a red? red? It's a pinkish red. All right. Well, maybe you want teal then. Yeah, I like teal. Okay. Well, Amazon, Nikki. <laughs> I heard a bunch of fanfare this morning, so I guess they have them now. That means I'd have to start snapping again. Send your complaints regarding that worst of the riot moment to fire Obadiah at RadioU.com. Yesterday, Amazon Prime tried to convince me again that they're worth my time when they released their trailer for their upcoming Tom Clancy's Jack Ryan TV show. We still have a bit. Like, that's not coming out till August. August. So we have some time. And they've been promoting it since last year. My guess would be, well, you got two things. One, I'll bet it's expensive. And two, it is a... Among certain people, it is a high-profile name. Yeah. Uh, Because, I mean, you've got to look at the fact that there have been multiple Jack Ryan movies, maybe even movies that you didn't know were that. So if you go all the way back to the 90s, 80s, 90s, you got The Hunt for Red October. Then you had two, and that had Alec Baldwin. Then you had Harrison Ford in Patriot Games and Clear and Present Danger. And then Ben Affleck came along and did The Sum of All Fears. And then uh, Chris, Chris Pine. Pine 
Yo man, Nikki. That's yo man. <laughs> he was in, but he, I didn't feel like his is did very well. And wasn't. that's not a reflection on him. Uh, that was it, poor nothing writing. ever is, is that it? Was it poor never writing. is, is it? In a bad movie. That was his uh misfortune. Yeah, it it really wasn't very good. And they had a great but cast. But his performance was good. They had a great cast. Sure. Uh, you had Kenneth Branagh, you had um <sighs> crap who was his handler uh the guy from the baseball movie the baseball movie yeah uh, from Costner? like for that from kevin 400 Costner? years ago kevin costner and then you had him and then i Kiera, love this game Kiera knightley was in it oh, okay she played uh what's well, jack and can't remember his wife's jill? name no it's not jill and see yourself out <laughs> just just go <laughs> i have to go early today just go all right <laughs> And maybe you can come back tomorrow. I might get the day off tomorrow. Oh, my well, gosh. You know what? I, just to be clear, it'll be coming out of your check. <laughs> uh, yeah. Yes. So it looks, I watched the trailer. John Krasinski, I, man, they, it looks like they might have something here. I have a it feeling, looks pretty cool. I don't know if maybe they meant to push it so much, but they pushed it hard during uh, Quiet Place because he was in that movie. Oh, sure. And that movie did really well. Yeah. So I think they were trying like. Hey, you know the one guy from the movie you liked? From the one thing? He's going to be on this Amazon show. Yeah. So I, I think it looks great. I'm really interested I in I just it. want a nice, new, exciting TV show. Yeah. I think it, that'd be fun. One of the things that I've been concerned is, like, one of the the things about the character, at least in the films more than in the books, uh, even though it's in the books, is like, hey, this guy is not, he's an analyst. He is not an action hero. So they do at times... Make him seem a little too action hero-y. But in this trailer, one of their big big hooks is like, hey, I'm an analyst. I'm not a field operative. He's not actually trained right? with all he's that. A, he's a former Marine, mm. but Jack Ryan was injured in a helicopter accident, which is why he ended up leaving the Marines. So, like, he got an honorable discharge and he went into the CIA. And now I'm giving you more info than you Whoa, want. Whoa, save it for the show. Everybody save it for like, the show in August. But, you know, Nikki, you could learn more by watching your movie boyfriend's take <laughs> on Jack Ryan. Chris Pine, yeah. Yeah. I think that's streaming free everywhere because nobody wanted it. <laughs> Again, not his fault. This was the worst of the riots. And we'd like to congratulate you on having the stomach to stick around to the very end. <laughs> The Riot exists because Radio U exists, and Radio U only exists because of your support. Find out more and give now at RadioU.com slash donate. I've never rage pooped.